20 seconds time to save a man from this hole. We're live in Ocean Beach. The worst of the rain is behind us, but are we completely done with wet weather? Details ahead. A second alarm fire in Santee engulfs the entire second story of a home. We have the details. Making Christmas bright for all tonight. How people experiencing homelessness are handling the holidays and the cold. A difficult rescue off our coast as a team works to free a whale tangled in ropes. I'll show you why the team had to abandon their efforts. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A man is free from the depths of a hole alongside an Ocean Beach cliff after an intense hours long rescue overnight. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. And I'm Anna Laurel in for Carlo and Marcella. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes was there as Cruz hoisted the man from the hole and then took him to the hospital. She joins us live with all the details. Kirsten. Hey there, Anna Laurel. Yeah, like you said, I'm right here by the cliffs where that man was stuck in that hole. We were right here. Our cameras were rolling as he was lifted using a crane and then placed onto that stretcher. Now, we don't know his name yet or the extent of his injuries, but what I can tell you is that he was smiling and cheers rang out as he was rescued after being trapped inside of that hole for about three days. We started microblasting this morning. We're able to free up the right leg first then started microblasting on the left leg, got that freed up and got the victim out as you all saw. Deputy Chief of Operations for San Diego Fire Dan Eddy says it took 150 people 20 hours working in shifts just to free the man trapped in the hole. And the space was literally that big that the individual was in for 15 feet down both directions as we went through. The original 911 call for help came from Good Samaritans. All of a sudden my friend here is uh, somebody screaming for help and um, obviously then we all hear it. We are, we're looking around and there's a guy in a hole. That's when Cole, Chris, Justin and Justin seen here still covered in dirt from the rescue jumped into action. We spoke to Justin Florentino Pacheco by phone who says Chris had to hold on to him while he tried to save the trapped man. He was all, like grabbing onto my feet while I was trying to use my nail to dig out the dirt and debris that's in front of him and try to grab him with my belt. He was around 10 to 15 feet deep into the ground, so I have to like put my whole body vertical, like my head down in order to at least have a grip on him. He was not able to move his one of his arms because it was like uh, covered in like dirt and he was like in a stuck position for those two remainder days. His first words were, like, help me. I'm scared. I'm hungry. I've been here for three days. Like, he was pretty panicked, you know, like, he's been down there for three days, not talking to anybody, doesn't know what's going on. So, you know, when we when we said the lifeguard was coming, he said he didn't want us to leave yet. He said, you just stay here until the lifeguard gets here. The group says they weren't sure if the man was unhoused or not. What they knew for sure was this. He was in grave need of someone to help him, and then I couldn't just leave him there. Rescue crews we talked to say that the man has injuries that might sound like crushing to his abdomen and his legs. We're still waiting on an update from the hospital on his condition tonight. But the Good Samaritans who are there to help, they say this all played out like a Christmas miracle. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. All right, Kirsten, thank you. The holiday weekend is here, and so is the CHP's maximum enforcement period as of just a few minutes ago. And speaking of the weekend, many of you are wondering if our storm is behind us or is more rain on the way. Let's talk to Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis with a first look at our forecast, Carleen. CHP was busy yesterday because mm. of the rain, and now I'm talking about maximum enforcement this weekend, but they won't have to worry about that rain. So okay. we overall are dealing with the work. We dealt with the worst of it. And now we're just dealing with a few light showers here or there in the county. But overall, we're done. And it comes to any heavy rainfall, at least. When you look at that looping radar over the last four hours, we've been seeing that moisture just exit out. Now, we did have a more moderate pocket that was moving in near Chula Vista right along the 125, but that has since dried out. When we look at what's still in effect, we no longer have that beach hazard statement as far as the threat of lightning right along the coast, but we still have the flood watch that goes until about 10 p.m. for tonight. We could still see a few isolated showers in the forecast tonight. And then by tomorrow, it's drier. When you look at that drying trend all the way into the start of next week. So if you have any outdoor plans, 
like me for Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. Well, chilly temperatures are going to be out there. It's going to be on the cool side, but overall we're not talking about any significant rainfall in the forecast. Just a few lingering showers here or there from tonight and then early tomorrow morning. Everything is uh, just cloudy and then everything clears out by the afternoon hours. We'll go ahead and take a look at just how much rain we had and all the lightning as well. I got a count for you coming up, Jesse. Thank you, Carlene. And as Carlene said, CHP was busy. They spent the morning dealing with multiple crashes, crashes, including one on the I-15 South near the 805. The driver of a semi truck was killed after hitting a tree and catching on fire. It's unclear if the cause of the crash was weather related. Meanwhile, in El Cajon, a woman and her dog were washed away in the channel near Gillespie Field. Santee Fire, Mount Miguel Fire and El Cajon Police assisted Heartland Fire and Rescue in the water rescue there. They tell us the woman was taken to the hospital and is in good condition and her dog was surrendered to the Humane Society. A city spokesperson says they prepared for the storm well, resulting in minimal damage. And don't forget, you can get the latest forecast and have weather alerts sent straight to your phone. Just download our free CBS 8 app or head to CBS8.com. The man accused of kidnapping a 13 year old girl from her home in Brawley and crossing into Mexico was supposed to appear in downtown court this afternoon. But at the last minute, the hearing was called off because the accused kidnapper is now hospitalized. As CBS 8's David Godfordson reports, the 44 year old was the subject of an international manhunt when the teenager was found safe this week in Tecate. Lorenzo Guerrero's detention hearing was canceled Friday in downtown San Diego federal court. His defense attorney told the judge her client is hospitalized after suffering chest pains from an existing heart condition. Guerrero's arrest on Tuesday ended nearly a week-long international manhunt for the 44-year-old ex-con. An Amber Alert was issued December 14th for the 13-year-old girl he is accused of kidnapping from her home in Brawley on December 10th. The Mexican government put out a news release saying the girl and her alleged abductor were located in the San Jose neighborhood of Tecate. A police commander in Brawley spoke to our sister station, KYMA. The FBI was working with Mexican authorities to locate and safely, uh, or safely locate the juvenile and the suspect, they were both located. Now that the teenager reportedly has been returned home, CBS 8 is no longer naming the minor or using her photo. Court records show Guerrero has a long criminal history. In 1999, he was sentenced to two and a half years in federal prison for smuggling 245 pounds of marijuana across the Tecate border crossing. Then in 2000, he got another one year for escaping from a federal prison in Kern County. In October 2008, he was sentenced to four years in prison for burglary and possession of drugs. In August 2010, he was given another three years in prison concurrently for transporting drugs and vehicle theft. In November 2020, 16 months in prison for resisting arrest. In October 2022, he was released to post-release community supervision. Earlier this year, court records show he violated a restraining order filed against him by his ex-wife in El Centro. Guerrero's detention hearing has been rescheduled now for the day after Christmas. His preliminary hearing is set for January 2nd. At the federal courthouse downtown, David Godfordson, CBS 8. All right, David, thank you. The family of an elderly man who died of E. coli related complications is now suing Miguel's Casina and Forest Ranch. This is the third lawsuit to be filed against that restaurant when dozens of people who ate at the restaurant back in October got sick and 87 year old John Ferber died. According to the Ferber family's lawsuit, E. coli affected 35 people who ate at that restaurant. Miguel's and the restaurant's owner, Brigantine Incorporated, are both named. The restaurant voluntarily closed for staff and food handling training, then reopened last month. San Diego police need your help tonight finding the person or group responsible for shooting and killing a bicyclist in Colina del Sol. It happened just before eight last night off El Cajon Boulevard and 49th Street. San Diego police say two officers were patrolling when they saw someone shoot the unidentified man from the passenger side of a dark colored SUV, then sped away. Officers stopped to help the unidentified man who was later pronounced dead. Anyone with information should call San Diego Police or Crime Stoppers. Here's the number 
888-580-8477. The Red Cross is stepping in to help tonight after a family lost their Santee home to a fire right now in the middle of the holiday season. CBS 8's Brian White talked with neighbors, some of whom were afraid the flames would spread to their properties. Huge flames shooting out of the roof of a two-story home in the 8700 block of Ruaco Drive. Heavy smoke billowing above the treetops. The roof was like engulfed in flames and they were, I don't know, like 20 feet high, you know, kind of gusting up into the air. Neighbors awoke to the fiery scene, startled by the size of the flames. Ken Stevens lives right across the street. He said it was unnerving when he looked out the window. It was pretty scary. I uh, woke up around 2.30 and uh, looked outside because the dogs are going nuts. And yeah, the flames are coming out the, out the roof. He called 911, then rushed his family out of the house as quickly as he could, fearing the blaze would spread. We got dogs in the car, got it backpacked. We're ready to go, but uh, the fire department came down. Did a job and did a great job. The Santee Fire Department responded before 3 a.m. They told me it was a stubborn fire, taking nearly a half hour to put out with more than 40 firefighters on scene. I was hoping our neighbor got out of the house. The three people home at the time all got out safely, but one was transported to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Red Cross was on scene and it's believed that all three people are now staying with family in the area. Yeah, the wind was blowing to the west, so there were a lot of embers flying. With plenty of trees and brush in the area, this fire could have easily spread, but weather conditions helped to keep that from happening. Luckily it was raining, so it kept uh, the flames from spreading. It was a big downpour at midnight and that uh, got everything damp. Firefighters remained on scene until 6 a.m. doing overhaul work. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. In Santee, Brian White, CBS 8. Hey, Brian, still ahead, a Hollywood star is recovering from an attack inside his home. Plus, which Southern California city just abolished heritage and pride months from its calendar? And the best time of the year for so many is also a harsh reality for others. Tonight, how those experiencing homelessness are handling the holidays and the cold.